absorbed because of Mother Parvati. So that feminine energy is what propels all of them. So he says, I will come with that force, that Adi Shakti, that power of the Divine Mother, who has brought into existence this world that is a powerhouse of the feminine. So he says, she also will become incarnate together with me. So in short, I do see that things. He says, in this way, I shall accomplish all your desire. What was his desire? To have a son like the Lord. And when he came, when Sri Ram appeared in that home of Raja Deswar, he brought the greatest joy that Raja Deswar ever had in his life was when Sri Ram became his son. So much so that he could not exist without Sri Ram. And when Sri Ram had to go into banishment, Rama, Rama, Kahi, Rama, Kahi, Rama, Rama, Kahi, Ram. He uttered that name six times. Rama, Rama, Kahi, Rama, Kahi. Rama, Rama, Kahi, Ram. Six times he uttered that name before he gave up his body. He said, I cannot exist in the absence of my Sri Ram. Just as a fish could not live without the water, and just as that snake could not live without that gem. In such a manner, that is it. So all parents, that is how Shashi and his wife love Arjun, as indeed all parents will. That is a kind of relationship. Prior to he coming into being, Arjun at this, there was never that love. Lo and behold, to the wedded pair came this. That's the gift of the divine. And the love that they have for their son is more than they will have for themselves.
And that is the kind of blood that Raja desperately had for Sri Ram. But the sad thing is, no matter how much we love each other, no matter how much you give of our in our being unto the world at large, to our friends, mother, father, it comes to an end at a certain point in time. That is the sad part. So no matter how profound that love is, it comes to an end at a certain point. But you know what doesn't come to an end? When you give that love to the divine. When you become so attached to his lotus feet that you cannot do without him, that love stays forever and ever and ever. That is one love that does not break. And that is the difference between the realm of the world and the realm of the divine world. So it is a great lesson for us as human beings. It is normal that we become attached. It's only normal we are human. But the scripture also gives us a lesson that even in the pursuit of everything worldly, we must keep our heads high and know that that will come to an end. If not today, not tomorrow, the day after, the day after. It will come. To come, it will come. And what has been written here in Sri Ramchak Manas has been echoed for thousands of years prior to this. And so it will be thousands of years to come. And it will never ever lose its luster. It is evergreen. It is a literature of yesterday, today and tomorrow. This is a living text. This is life to its fullest. That is why Manu and Satrupa, they never ask for anything of the world. My Lord, I want to have a son like you. One of whom will be proud. One who would set an example for the world. Who will not want to walk in the footsteps of Prabhu Sri Ram? You know, Valmiki Dad Sri Ram, Sabkar manga hi ekapal. Sabkar, everybody wants ekapal, one fruit. What is that fruit? Ramacharana rati hoi. Ramachar means the feet of Prabhu Sri Ram. I want to love the lotus feet of my beloved Prabhu Sri Ram. That love never comes to an end. And that is the fruit. Eventually, no matter how much we want to get of the world, at some point in time, we will come to the full realization that this is not it. This indeed is not it. There is something far beyond that. So when we have that connection with the Divine, that connection stays forever and ever. In connection with the world, that is fleeting. It passes at some point in time. So the final chopai before I do the Doha to see that six. So he's telling them, I shall come accomplish all your desire. And he says, Satya means truth. He mentions Satya three times. Satya, Satya, Pan, Satya, Hamara. Hamara means me. Pan is a promise. He says, Whatever promise I have made, that will come to pass. I have no doubt about that. So he says, Puni Puni Asakari Kripa Nidhana Antar Dham Bhai Bhagwana. He says, he re, Puni Puni means again and again. So he repeated this again and again. The gracious Lord then vanished from their sight. 
having vanished, having gone from there. What was their reaction? How did they respond to that? His presence not being there now. To see that says us in Chopa. <laughs> They were it pair, that is Banu and Satupa, they laid up in their hearts the image. When that, when that image of the Lord vanished, they captured that image in their hearts. So even though the Lord was not there, with the mind's eye, they could see him. When you would have left here this evening, you would have seen quite a number of people. And when you sit in your car going home, you are capturing, you will capture in your mind some of the faces that you have seen. In this measure, they captured that image of the Lord deep within the bosom of their hearts. It says, Tehi Arshama Nibase Kachukala Dampati Oda Dhari Bhagat Kripala. That Bhagat Kripa, that Lord who is so compassionate to his devotees, he stayed and they went and they stayed for some time in their hermitage. Because remember he tell them to go to Indalo. But when he left for that moment, they went and stayed for some time in their hermitage where they were staying. Samaya Pai Tanutaji Anayasa Jai Kina Amaravati Basa. And then, when the time had come, when the time passed, painlessly they gave up the life of this body. Because they had to go to the heavenly law. So they gave up, when the time was right, they gave up this body and they went to Amaravati. That is, the city of the immortals. Amar means immortal. 
Samarwati, that the city of the celestials, the immortals. Remember he said, go to Indraluk, have a good time there. And when the time is right, you will be born in Ayodhya as King Dashrat, and I will come as your son. So now they have gone to the immortals. They are in their precincts of Lord Indra. And I bring my lesson to an end. This evening, to see that things in Doha. This legend, this sacred legend, was related to by Shiva to Umahi Kahi Bhikaketu. Umahi refers to Mother Parvati. So this katha was narrated by Lord Shankara to Mother Parvati. But also relating the same katha is Sant to Siddhas to his fellow sadhus. And relating the same katha again was Yagyabhag to Bharadvaj. And the same was again recited by Kaat Bhusundaji to Garudji Maharaj. There were four shrines in which this was first narrated. It was the same katha. So Lord Shankara is narrating this to Mother Parvati and he said, Bharadvaj Asunu Aparapuni Rama Janam Bharadvaj. He says, no Bharadvaj. He says, bear yet, bear yet another cause of Sri Rama's descent. This was one of the reasons why he came. So, Yagna Bharadvaj said, Bharadvaj, now that I have narrated that to you, listen again to another reason why the Lord has come, why he has descended from heavenly abode to the earth. And my dear friends, the Lord comes from time to time. And the same thing that Sri Krishna has said in the Gita, Yada, Yada, Hi, Dharma, etc., etc., etc. Sri Ram says, Jab, Jab, Hoi, Dharma, Ki, Hani. Whenever Dharma is on the decline, he says, Iksha, of my own free will, I take a form to come and to restore order. So the Lord always comes. This, 
as I had indicated beginning, has been read for thousands of years prior to now. Great devotees have listened. Their lives have changed. They have become noble individuals. And that is the power of the pen of Sant Tulsidas. It is said that the moving finger writes and having written moves on. This literature would move on forever. Sant Tulsidas, what he has written and nobody could change. The words that he has written is the exact word that demonstrate the thought, the emotion, all aspects of the human emotions. Everything that was written, that is to the letter. That is, it could be a different word. So he used the word. That's why this is so very important. So my dear friends, it has been an extreme pleasure for me to have done this. It is said that those who narrate and those who listen get the same kind of blessings. The only thing is, this narrator is not a profound narrator as we had in the past. I give you only so much as I understand, as I could capture in my own mind. But it was a pleasant experience this evening to be in the home of Shashi and his Dharmapatni and his son. We have had a very close relationship ever since I came with our group, Roman group, in the year 1989. It was my first trip abroad in Orlando. And I came to meet this family of Shashi, Yogaji. We have been friends ever since. And it's a special pleasure to be in this midst this evening. He has grown when I knew him at first time. He was a little guy. But he took us around. He had just gotten his license and he took us, the members of the group, all over the place. So ever since we were deeply grateful. And now he has grown. He has blossomed into a physician, a class physician. And that tells a great story. It is because of the initial growth that he got from the parents, Yogaji and his mother. Unfortunately, she is not here, but she was a very beautiful soul. So it's a special honor for me this evening to be here. And I hope that everything works well for Mr. Chi and the family. Thank you very much. I see a part of the just left. Yes. 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 Yes.